somewhat different format. We are working not one by one, but uh, in a group. I believe that uh, the change of format will be perceived positively by the audience. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we will begin, if um, you don't mind. We are uh, glad to welcome you at this round table. This is a, a very uh, specific round table uh, aimed at investment into energy uh, sector of Ukraine. This is a special format organized by Ministry of Energy and Coal Industry. Um, together with Committee on uh, Reform Support at Cabinet of Ministers to increase uh, cooperation uh, between the ministry and uh, public experts, uh, c uh, civic expert. We'll talk about investment in energy sector, and I'd like to welcome Mr. Minister Volodymyr Dimchishin, and then Ms. Salomon, representative of the World Bank, our faithful partner in energy issues. And then Mikhail Lubno Arian, um, the chief uh, of uh, European Integration Department at Ministry of Energy. Olena Pavlenko, uh, the president of Dixie Group Analytical Center. And um, uh, Natalia Slobodjanik from International Center of Perspective uh, Research, Sergei Soroka. Coordinator of um, Project uh, Civil, uh, Civic Platform New Country, and Andriy Pervertayu, representative of uh, Expert Coalition for Energy Reforms. And uh, let's begin uh, with technical issues. Our format of communications would be as follows a brief uh, presentation by expert, uh, up to 10 uh, minutes, possibility for journalists to ask two, three brief questions, and the rest of the questions. If um, uh, we have discussion, when we have discussion, I hope, uh, let's move it to the end uh, so that we'll be able to hear all the experts first. Uh, if you did not receive handouts of all um, 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 expert presentations, please uh, leave your email at um, uh, reception and we'll send those materials. Mr. Volodymyr, um, please begin. In fact, When I um, am invited to brief on certain issues, and uh, um, I, I do speak, but uh, sometimes I lack discussion. Uh, journalists do ask questions, but uh, sometimes question is not enough to disclose the whole subject. So as we meet in this expert circle, we can create a discussion, and we should. Uh, so uh, this topic is very important, attracting investment. In recent uh, days and months, we have talked about privatization, and this is one of the ways of attracting investment. The question is um, uh, very urgent. Uh, the uh, general public uh, looks at uh, privatization as a cheap sale of uh, state uh, assets. And as Minister of Energy, I would like to assure you that uh, despite uh, what has been happening in the last 23, four years. The government, the state, has fundamental assets that are worth a lot. And they're very important for the um, energy system of Ukraine, as far as my ministry is concerned. So uh, we are using them very efficiently. Energoatom, as uh, everyone knows, is quite 
important uh, in uh, supporting energy um, system of Ukraine in the last year, and we uh, are putting global stakes on it. Uh, then gas transportation system that has been discussed a lot, and um, uh, the electric energy distribution and uh, transportation system. Um, some distribution uh, networks already privatized, but big companies of Zaporizhia, Ternopil, Kharkiv, and uh, Zhitomir are still to be privatized. Well, the government still has um, the control packages of stock in these companies, and uh, uh, there are many minority packages uh, to be privatized. So, um, and minority um, package still provides uh, essential influence on energy system. Those minority packages are also uh, valuable. Ukrgidro, this is electric generation uh, company like Energoatom and others that I already mentioned. They're not uh, viewed for privatization. Center Energo is uh, discussed for privatization. We are still discussing whether um, this is uh, uh, the issue for today or um, sometime in the future because heat generation is monopolized uh, market and um, uh, the government um, uh, will not be able to influence this market if um, Center Energo is sold. So this is our last bastion, uh, the Center Energo, giving it up to independent private investor um, could be risky if the investor is not interested to modernize, to invest, to attract new technologies. Yes, we do understand that the work of regulator, and in this case, uh, energy regulator, and anti-monopoly committee are both regulators working in the area. Um, this is um, an indirect influence, but having a, a, a control package and uh, being able to appoint the leadership of a company is um, a direct influence, uh, rather the indirect influence through regulators. Yes, regulators, uh, both energy uh, regulator and anti-monopoly committee at this time are div uh, just gaining those functions and in future they might have it but at this time this influence is very limited we saw the decision of anti-monopoly committee that in fact in heat uh, generation uh, nobody has a monopoly state well i'm absolutely sure the opposite is true in coal uh, center um, uh, in a coal uh, industry uh, they say there is no monopoly while DTEC con controls 70% um, um, of extraction capacities in Ukraine. So uh, this would be our last um, way to influence those companies. So we do not um, rush to give it up. But uh, in any case, I agree with everyone that funds should be attracted. At this time, we were able to do so. Uh, through champions, Energoatom, for example, to extend uh, uh, the capacity of energy um, units to, uh, as well as to invest in uh, um, uh, the main lines and distribution networks. Transgas has uh, received funds for modernization of uh, pumping stations and transfer stations, but these funds come from uh, I, I, subsidy investment like the World Bank, like European um, Bank for Reconstruction and Development, and uh, we have representatives of uh, the World Bank here. This is uh, These are institutional funds. They're long-term, they're cheap, but uh, uh, they're hard um, uh, uh, in operation because we need to have a flow of private investment. We need to create conditions where small, medium-sized, or large companies would come and they would be independent from uh, state guarantees. Um, uh, they would be independent from the regulators' uh, uh, rule to return the funds uh, inve uh, invested by European Investment Bank, um, IBRD, EBRD, the World Bank. So 
Because, because in fact, uh, um, uh, these uh, uh, long-term investments have uh, many factors that are very specific, like um, uh, the guarantees of re return, and they can work only with state-owned companies. So, in fact, we understand that this difference, and we saw it in investment in 2005, 6, and 7, when European banks uh, came in uh, to, uh, and they invested into private segment, into smaller companies, uh, not the super giants. And in fact, uh, uh, only with uh, privatization will see the effect of investment. Uh, we need to do some banal things like legislation so that uh, those who bring funds in would understand how they can protect uh, their investment or their decisions to have clear court system understandable where you can come and complain or ask for protection. This is basic. This is uh, clear. But, but from my side, I'm Minister of Energy. I am not able to directly influence those areas. But what I can do, I can try to uh, formulate just rules of work at certain segments to create competition, to form rules of operation in energy segment uh, that external um, um, that will give external and uh, investors a possibility to see that as they invest uh, bring in capital and personnel as they um, build upon existing legislation they will be able to work adequately to protect their investment to receive profit and to um, uh, repatriate uh, the profits that they have made very clear example as we work with uh, ministry of finance and uh, cabinet of ministers to define the tax rate for gas extraction this is very clear example because this is a large segment interesting for foreign investors and the, this investment is very necessary for Ukraine. We have one trillion cubic meters of reserves. If we extract over short time, uh, we can use, uh, we can increase uh, the extraction over two, three, maybe four years at most, and we can increase the extraction to uh, add five, six, eight uh, um, billion cubic meters to decrease the dependency of Ukraine uh, on uh, gas imports from uh, Russia or European Union. We will become uh, self-dependent. Uh, we uh, will uh, attract people, technologies, and they will help vertically in the whole chain of services related to gas extraction. This is a huge range uh, and uh, uh, our ND uh, segment. So as we develop this segment, uh, we are not just keeping jobs and uh, getting uh, money from taxes and rents uh, uh, given by the companies uh, uh, working in the area, but we uh, receive a lot of secondary benefits. In this case, we do work in the direction of uh, building better relations between Cabinet of Ministers, the Ministry of Finance, and investors. We do help them understand each other. We need to find this uh, golden middle uh, to, on the one hand, fill the budget, on the other hand, uh, to provide additional motivation for investors to provide more money we need to we have created such conditions uh, uh, already and we hope in uh, uh, the near future to formulate certain position of cabinet of ministers and uh, to change the budget code to introduce necessary changes on taxation so this is an example i've just given it as an example how we should be changing the environment and uh, if the royalty for companies which are producing gas is reduced 
then we expect that this could lead to hundreds of millions of investments every year during several few next year, several next years. We know what the companies are. There are five, well, six big uh, gas producers, private gas producers uh, that operate in Ukraine, and they are ready to invest money to produce not just gas, but uh, also get the feeling of uh, energy independence uh, in negotiations uh, with uh, Gazprom. There are many benefits in that, and that is uh, the same in uh, everything, in oil production, in uh, electricity generation. There are segments uh, in each uh, of the sectors which are to be developed. Probably you cannot see it from the outside. For such processes, we need longer time. But I'm sure that you will see the effect within uh, even during this heating season because uh, what will be happening uh, uh, this year uh, we will be ready much better as the country and uh, a lot will uh, also depend on attracting investments uh, the direct investments loans and people will feel the effect from the work of the ministry the heating season is quite close you will see the results soon the legislative initiatives, the amendments to the laws uh, on uh, gas market and the electricity market, which we will be discussing tomorrow in our ministry. The first draft will be discussed in our ministry. And we are planning to have it approved by the parliament till September. Maybe in September this will happen. Uh, these uh, are two uh, big laws which uh, form uh, the environment differently. And uh, outside investors, outside the participants will see that we form fair rules of game, which uh, meet the requirements of the third package, but also these are just civilized conditions which will allow us to attract additional funds and develop the sector. So maybe uh, we'll be then answering questions. Maybe immediately we will have some, free, some brief questions. Let's start with the first two questions. Please introduce yourself. Uh, Channel 17. I have two questions to Vladimir. Uh, uh, the change in gas supplies, will it affect the tariffs for the population? And also, was this uh, change uh, made because of the default? Uh, this uh, change will not uh, influence the, the security of gas supply, uh, neither on supplies to Ukraine. It will not even affect the preparation to the heating season. Just several figures. We have now 12 BCM of gas in our storage facilities. Every day we were pumping in 60 BCM. We have 100 days left till the heating season. If we continue to pump in 60, uh, then we will get uh, 18 BCM, which is a little less than uh, 19, but it's more than 16.6, .6, which we had in the beginning of the last uh, heating season. Many people say that last winter was warm. Yes, that is true. But having 16.6 .6 BCM of gas last year, we pumped in. Uh, we, we transported to Donetsk and Lugansk uh, regions to BCM, and we do not. We will not be doing it this year. The consumption last year 
was 10 percent higher now our consumption is uh, 20 percent lower if we say that this year the population consumes 20 billion then you can feel how much more we were consuming last year then the year has passed. We started with 16.6 .6 and we ended with 17.5 BCM. The risks for gas transportation systems start when the level is less than 5 BCM. And there, it, it depends, uh, it, it's related to some restrictions on how much gas we can get from, from the facility, storage facility. So, we consumed uh, extra several billion, two billion are left. So even if this winter, if we start the winter with the same volume that we had last year, that's quite comfortable to uh, provide the gas for and heating for our consumers and to guarantee the uh, gas transportation of gas from Russia to Europe. But this year we are planning to uh, pump in much more. All depends on money. Now back to 60. Let's uh, stick to the to our topic. The topic of gas, where we buy it, the, the the tariffs are very important, but it is important for investments to come here to reduce the tariffs. The tariffs depend on its cost, on the cost of gas. You saw the discussion. The Ukrainian gas or imported gas, in any case, uh, it's not enough to have Ukrainian gas. We have to import it at a world price. And we are trying to convince uh, that the price uh, for Ukraine should be lower than Russians stated, and we still have this discussion. But the tariff, with the exception of the cost of gas, will depend on efficiency of work, uh, of operation of uh, uh, transportation system because a big share of the cost is uh, uh, depending on transportation. It's uh, connected to efficiency of uh, oil gases and the whole transportation system. So attracting investments to transportation system to oil gases will help not to increase the cost of transportation and it will really affect the final price for gas for all consumers, commercial and private. And it will be reducing the tariff. The second question, we remember the context about investments. Could you please tell, will Center Energy be divided into plants. The Tripilska will be separated, for example. Yeah, this is a good idea. This is possible because having three players in the market, we've seen it. It's too complicated. The more participants we have, it would be good if they are of high quality so that they have access to coal, to money which they need uh, the uh, money that they need also for investments, for modernization of plants. Well, if three plants are sold separately, that would be positive. Every plant is specific and the risks are different. For plant, for them, it's easier to find coal, which is in Ukraine. They don't have to import, but there are some geopolitical risks to other plants. From the point of view of location, they are better located, but the problem is with coal supply. And um, it is possible. Yeah, the idea is a good one. We discussed it. Any questions? 
And do I understand it correctly that in the hearing period and there will be no gas supplied to the territories which are not under the control of the government. Does that mean that we will be still buying gas from Europe uh, via reverse? Uh, and uh, do you expect an increase of the uh, volumes of investment? Please answer the third question. Do we? Uh, expect any investments to others, they do not refer to uh, this topic. Talking about aggregated topics, very often people talk about billions, but there's no sense in these huge figures. You need to talk about specific things, about how they will influence, how will they influence the tariff, the availability of gas, of electricity. So how many billions do we need? Uh, we need to change uh, all uh, electricity supply uh, sector and electricity generation sector. Energa Atom, for example, received 600 million euros to conduct operations on extending the period of operation. The second southern Ukrainian block is in this process, the first one, the first Zaporizhia unit. From March next year, from February next year, we'll start these works. The works are going on, the money is invested, but these are money to Ukrtransgas, to Ukrenerga. In fact, for all consumers, the investments into uh, water, water canal, uh, water uh, canal system are more important, uh, and uh, uh, the money which are allocated to water channel and to heat generation facilities are very important. They will reduce the cost of the electricity by 40, 50 percent. That's the electricity they consume. Uh, because transportation of water, for transportation of water, electricity uh, accounts for 50 percent of the cost. So these are the things which will positively affect the tariffs for the consumers. And they will also affect the quality, availability of the product. There's one issue, very interesting. Many people are saying, are talking about investments into Ukrenerga. Do we need them? We understand that the assets have not been uh, renewed. Uh, and now when we understand that the cost of gas is much higher, we, the ministry, we expect that the consumers will start uh, replacing gas by electricity and the load uh, on the grid will be much higher. The grid should be ready to supply all these capacities to consumers. The night tariff for electricity is low now and we will keep it low. Those who switch to electric, electric heating and they will be using it at night, they will put these uh, special meters, uh, they will win. So those who think whether to uh, install electric heating or not, I can tell you that's profitable. This should be done. But for energy system, it should be ready because it will influence the grids. And additional money uh, should be uh, given to Obelenerga and Dukerenerga. But, I'm sorry, and don't make it, uh, don't turn it into the briefing of the minister. There are many people here. Let's move to the next speaker. Please note some other of your questions and the minister will give answers to them. But please keep to the topic. We discuss tariffs every day. 
and uh, the answers the minister gives every day. My brief question to the minister. The question to the minister, Volodymyr, brief question to you. Do I understand it correctly? The, the desire of private, the, the private investors do want to come to Ukraine. I started talking about segments where, which are mostly interesting for them. Gas production, definitely. Generation, electricity generation is very in interesting as well, but it's complicated. Part of it does not fall under privatization. Many companies, many large companies are interested in investing into Energatom, but these are the assets which will not be privatized. But heat generation, which is concentrated, the segment is interesting, and we need it. Uh, thermal power plants uh, work uh, at 20% of uh, capacity, well, uh, efficiency, 20% of efficiency. We could consume half less coal instead of 25, 26 million, uh, 15 million tons would be enough. There are many other issues where to sell the coal that we produce. Uh, Madam Wilhelm, the question to you, do you uh, do investors want to come to Ukraine? The minister believes that investors, private investors want to come to Ukraine. What do you believe? What do international companies say? Do they want to come to Ukraine? And uh, on what terms are they ready to work here? Thank you very much for uh, having me here today. Um, private investors wants to go where you have a transparent uh, framework, where you have sound law, where you have committed actors. And from what we see um, from the uh, government engagement uh, through the Extractive Industry Transparency Initiative, I mean, there is clear a sign of um, commitment of the government to enhancing transparency in the energy sector. And that's definitely um, a major factor to attract private investors. Um, I think that every time we talk about you know, introducing the private sector into a country, into the, the asset of a country, they are great concern. And this is very understandable. I mean, there has been um, lesson learned. I mean, all privatization haven't been done properly. And what I see from the discussion that we are having, and also, again, from this engagement of the country in the EITI process, is that um, there is an understanding that it's not any investors that we want. It's an investors that is going to benefit to the country and to the people in the country. It's really um, an effort to develop really the reforms and the vision and the framework that are going to make Ukraine a better place for investors. And investors are investors. They um, worry um, is primarily, I mean, to make sure that they are going to go in a country where um, they have um, risk that they can manage, and therefore um, the need for a very clear legal and regulatory framework, the need for a vision, the need for a clear strategy, the, the need for you know um, a long-term plan. Um, I think that um, the government is in many uh, instances um, uh, working very hard into developing, you know, a comprehensive, um, com comprehensive strategy for uh, its uh, energy and extractive sector, and um, and I see uh, from my point of view, and we work in uh, one ha over 180 countries, uh, so I, I think that yes, uh, investor. Uh, are likely to, to want to invest in, in Ukraine, and that's going to be all the more the case um, than the efforts that the government are developing are going to deepen. Thank you. Thank you. If there is a brief question, please. If there are no questions, uh, then uh, Mikhailo. 
Thank you for inviting me and giving me opportunity to present. You asked if Ukraine um, has investors ready to invest in energy sector. I can give you a specific example. Three weeks ago, we, I participated in open, opening Arabinsky, um field that uh, was done uh, by a small um, Lviv company together with 75% uh, of Czech investment. Uh, one uh, drill provides 20,000 uh, cubic meters uh, uh, per uh, 24 hours, but they are interested in this. Um, uh, they work uh, on uh, the fields that would not be interesting to large Western companies, and they do small business. So this is live investment, real example. And that happened in today's rent uh, payments, and they still want to work. So um, what does it say? There are many uh, who would like to join this business, uh, gas extraction business, and they would like to expand, and we should expand it in our country. The minister said today that really we have seven to eight private large uh, gas extraction companies. Let's take um, uh, this field, gas extraction. Seven, is it enough? Uh, too small or too big number. It is too small. The number should go and multiply. Um, we went to Houston just recently to a, a large international um, uh, conference care week and we saw the American experience how they uh, made a shale revolution um, for gas and oil done by small uh, companies, uh, um, s s small American companies, after um, um, the capitalization, they became large player players, but initiative, enthusiasm came from small business, and they demonstrated they can reach good results. The question is how to attract these players into Ukrainian market. This is a difficult question because, really, the ministry is very active in developing new game rules. We have developed uh, together with uh, Energy uh, Secretariat uh, a law on um, um, energy market. It was voted uh, positively very good. Now we talk about regulation, um, um, legislation. This is also a very good achievement to receive a good agency in the government working according to normal European standards. Now we are completing the draft law on uh, electricity market that will be presented uh, tomorrow in main um, concept. We hope to complete public discussion of the draft law and as uh, was already mentioned in September will promote this issue through Supreme Council of Ukraine. These are systemic issues. Initiative of uh, transparency and uh, this uh, um, a working group uh, uh, in uh, transparency uh, is a very important work and we are looking for specific results. We are not far away from uh, the report and we have specific developments here. There are issues though uh, that are not fully dependent on the ministry. Let me give you a small example on gas extraction. We made analysis what documents, what permissive uh, um, documents are ne necessary for investor and those who want to do gas extraction in Ukraine. A large table, 14 pages, 75 permission documents that should come from 15 or uh, 17 agencies of the government ministry of energy, only two of them. Uh, 75 documents, just think about this number. And if someone makes mistake in the process, then the work will be halted. So, we for sure need to work with civil society with you to change the rules of the game. We are doing huge things. We are introducing draft laws to change the whole system. But we need your assistance. We need systemic movement into deregulation. Just uh, like uh, for gas extraction, on Monday in district center to show what's happening in gas extraction in Poltava region, we are making very interesting event. 
we invited private and uh, state-owned gas company uh, companies. Uh, mit, uh, the minister will uh, be the chair of this meeting, and we invited uh, all agencies that are related to gas extraction and all the governors. Uh, and uh, we uh, ask, we are going to ask, what are we going to do with this table? Seventy-five permissive agreements and documents. We need to deregulate. Who needs uh, to? Um, um, spearhead of this um, project is still a question, but uh, responsibilities are uh, very distributed. How to get out of this situation? We want to work with NGOs. We are working with EBA, for example. We would like to attract ACC and other structures into this process in order to make a roadmap of what needs to be deregulated in gas extraction specific roadmap and then based on uh, the ministry we would like to take political initiative to promote this issue there is also as an example of uh, how we can help investors a living example we understand that processes are processes in state agencies um, sometimes they're not uh, very efficient on the high level. So we initiate together with uh, business environment, uh, uh, with um, business uh, associations. We want to sign memorandum on mechanism of early reaction to the problems uh, um, with investors. We would like to appoint specific people in the ministry who would uh, report to the ministry the same day or the next day uh, of the problems that investors have. This depends on us. Uh, but uh, let me underline again, together with you, with uh, pu public, with uh, civil society, with international partners, we need uh, to promote uh, the issue of deregulation. For us, this is the basis, this foundation, to change what's happening today. One, two, please. Thank you. Metro Maronich uh, in Energy Strategies Foundation. Two specific questions. Uh, the, these new laws that you talked about, how do they work? Well, uh, the electric uh, market is still a draft law, but the question is, what will replace this foundation of um, cost uh, disbalance? Um, what? Uh, um, uh, you don't have this uh, part in your uh, document. It was in previous version. Uh, so what will happen with that foundation? And uh, the second um, issue is uh, uh, the uh, draft law on um, um, deregulation. Now it went back to the ministries because it was criticized by the members of um, leading coalition. So what will happen in the new question of um, regulation? Will all of the complaints that were announced at the Committee of uh, Fuel and Energy uh, be um, addressed? That's a question of transparency. I'll give a small answer on the regulation. We had many comments uh, from European Commission from the World Bank specifically to the essence on the budget commission on uh, public meetings and other sessions these are very constructive positive things most of political issues related to procedure of appointing the members of the regulation commission these are political questions in previous version where we talked about five participants, five members of nomination commission, two appointed by the president, two by Supreme Council, and one from cabinet of ministers. In principle, this commission was quite wide. And I believe that it uh, was supposed to be qualified enough politically, including to prepare and to make high quality selection 
to provide actually high quality product. The specialists that president can use to approve the commission members as commission members. So I believe this is very transparent, this is very clear and wide ranging process. Complaints came, but in this part, this part, I believe, uh, should remain as is. In other parts, technical financial issues, just like I mentioned, yes, the changes were made. But political part will try to understand and explain it into the parliament. On the second question. I understand, and let me answer uh, the question first. Tomorrow there will be presentation on the issue, and I invite you to come to listen, to ask questions, and you'll get all your answers, not to uh, give um, uh, much time on it. And now, public service obligations to provide compensation for providing cheaper electric energy, for example. This question is not detailized in the law, but it's offered as analogy to um, uh, the energy market uh, to this function would be given to cabinet of ministers and uh, it would be given to the market players. This question is still up to discussion and uh, you can join the discussion tomorrow. I'm from uh, the public council uh, at the Ministry of, Ener um, Ministry of Energy. Question to Mikhailo. We have uh, former ministers, deputy ministers, uh, representatives of um, Academy of uh, Science. Uh, we have uh, um, agreements with Rock Rockefeller Foundation. Do we need to work with ministry first or with cabinet of ministers first? This question to you. We're talking about the ministry now so we can talk about everything we can do. We are part of the cabinet. And when we talk about more complicated tasks, not just our ministry, is playing a significant role. We are involving other ministries led by a uh, prime minister or vice prime minister. So just recently we had discussion on energy bridge that we have coordinated as well to synchronize to improve um, the lines from Khmelnytsky station to Poland. And the Ministry of Foreign Affairs has played an important role in this cooperation. So the questions uh, that can be solved by the cabinet are solved by the cabinet. But what we can do in the ministry, the rent uh, rates are in purview of the cabinet of ministers. But we can talk about investment into the state companies that we control. And we can talk about privatization. And I mentioned already uh, the Teplo Comun Energo company and the nine uh, heat uh, um, power plants that will be offered for uh, privatization, uh, the majority packages, uh, the minority packages in uh, regional energy stations, uh, regional gas um, stations uh, have more um, complicated issues, so we don't uh, bring them up for uh, public discussion yet. Uh, but uh, it involves uh, certain agreements um, that we are. Uh, studying at the time there are other companies related to electricity other sources of energy and in the future we'll need to take more active position in distributing licenses for gas and oil extraction because we do consume oil products and gas in ukraine uh, 
uh, that uh, we produce and we need to increase extraction to decrease imports. Uh, so there are different options. We can diversify uh, the imports by increasing the supply. Many people come and say we can buy licenses on secondary market, but we are not sure how pure um, uh, these licenses are. So if the government did auctions again and would provide more licenses to extract oil or gas, we would participate in those uh, and we, uh, investors would look at this very positively. My small remark to help answer this question. As uh, Mr. Volodymyr and Mr. Mikhailo said, there are many questions uh, related to the ministry, but there are also many questions between uh, uh, the ministries and uh, the public council. Uh, and the ministry are not limiting themselves in this work. We need to expand the circle of communication to everyone. I have two more questions, but I'd like to move them to uh, conclusion to give opportunity to public experts to speak. So, Ms. Elena, we have already mentioned uh, necessity for transparency. Um, and uh, now I would like to uh, move to presentation, presentation number one. Thank you, Aliona. It will be easy for me to begin this presentation because we talked about extraction uh, sector and this is where we need investment very much. This is where investors can come, but investor will not come if uh, uh, three factors are not present. First, trust to the ministries to the government as a whole. Second, rules of the game. They should be stable, they should be transparent, and they should be honest. And third, competition. If a market is monopoly, then uh, no, no investor would like to uh, stand aside and watch somebody else working. Uh, so these are very important questions for Ukraine uh, energy sector today the questions are raised by the lack of transparency, a lack of public balance of gas. All journalists know the stories of two years ago, the courts uh, and investors look at this as risk. So um, um, uh, they are afraid that they will not be able to supply gas to their own consumers. The second question of the cost and market a price for the gas. This is a question that is discussed today because investors are talking about one level of um, cost of extraction. The ministries and the government give another number and there is a conflict and decrease of extraction and the country loses. Next question, uh, lack of um, information about real owners of uh, extracting business this problem always existed because there was always a threat of monopoly for uh, this market and uh, if there is monopoly there is uh, um, no honest competition then uh, uh, there is no information of companies payment into state budget and local budgets because communities of extracting regions uh, are complaining that uh, the companies are extracting um, um, using infrastructure um, and uh, what uh, uh, money is given to local budget. The companies say we pay, the people say we don't receive. So these questions could be uh, solved by transparency if there is a, a tripartite um, transparent relation between company, public and um, the government. Uh, let me show on this slide how far are um, the Western countries uh, in this issue. They understand the importance of transparency and they instate um, these um, requirements for public transparency. We are still just approving uh, legislation and declare that we will make the sector transparent. Uh, two weeks ago, the law was passed to obligate extracting companies uh, uh, 
to uh, public uh, uh, publicize the data on uh, the extraction and the payments they have done. But uh, uh, the government of the United States, Canada, and Germany not just approved such legislation, but it's in, in, um, implemented very well. Uh, Stat Oil from Norway are not just declaring uh, the payments they do in Norway, but they publish every payment uh, they give to whatever budget in every country. Uh, the similar I uh, thing is United States. Um, um, government, uh, the battle is still going on, but uh, this system is working and it will be even more efficient. Why transparency is such an important thing for investors? First, is uh, this brings more trust to the country that, where you work. You understand the rules of the game, you understand how to build your policy for the next five, seven years, and extracting business is uh, related to long-term investment. You cannot just uh, get it paid back over two years. Second, conflicts locally. If you work um, in the area where all the villages hate you for uh, uh, broken roads and um, 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 the uh, dug uh, ground, so when the company shows how much they paid into local budget village uh, council, um, regional or and uh, district councils, then uh, this will improve their relations with community. Third is international image and rating to raise the rating of the nation to uh, have discussions with large um, um, investors uh, like uh, this uh, conference we are about to have to bring more investment. And the last thing is to combat corruption and uh, schemes um, in extraction industry which uh, have happened in Ukraine so many times. How does it work in the United States? Uh, all the data on extraction and payments by different companies are open access data. You can uh, uh, get uh, uh, this information by just putting in their name and asking how much they have paid in every tax, and it's even color-coded. Talking about Ukraine, I already talked about the initiative of transparency of extracting sector. What is that? This is international standard that will ob obligate Ukraine to publish a report uh, in October this year. According to this report, they will need to give two types of information. First, contextual information, full information about the extraction, uh, the main players, the main fields, uh, uh, the volumes, uh, the license owners. This is very interesting information for public uh, as well. And the second part is information on payments how much every company has paid in taxes, to where, to what budgets. It's very important because some companies have many fields but are paying very minimal funds in taxes. All this information is not gathered by the ministry but by independent um, administrator auditing company that will be paid by the World Bank. The World Bank is present here. We have negotiations on very specific issues of uh, this administrator work. So I invite everyone to wait for October when this report is to be published. And uh, we will have a lot of interesting information there for every one of us. I also would like to mention where this uh, obligation is uh, stated. It's not just a desire by the public or intention by the ministry. This is coalition agreement, uh, and this obligation is specifically written there. This is a roadmap of European integration reform, the goals set by the um, NGOs. So this is action plan of open government, also obligation by the state. And also association agreement. That is this requirement is uh, within the requirement to implement in Ukraine the directive on uh, uh, reporting. The companies are to publish data on their uh, payments. That is the requirement of Europe. Thank you for attention. If you have questions,
You're welcome. In fact, my question, international law firm dentist, my question is on the cost for natural gas that's to Elena and uh, about the permits and regulations that the previous speaker mentioned. Now the situation for the companies in oil and gas complex are such that technically they cannot export the gas which was produced in Ukraine. For a few months there was a problem that they had, could not sell gas to anyone, no one was buying. Now, when uh, they, they find bias, but because of technical restrictions, because of licensing of this activity, they fail to export, and now they cannot export. My question is to the presenters who were talking about new legislation, about legislation on the natural gas market will uh, the uh, export of gas be liberalized so that the uh, investors uh, come uh, and see whether they can export or not. And can Mr. Dimchishin say whether the ministry will agree to give her permission for export of gas in Ukraine or whether the system of licensing gas export be changed? In fact, as far as I remember, the gas export is not prohibited. They just need to get a license, to receive a license. Frankly speaking, I am not sure that is our license, that the license of the Ministry of Economy. We do participate in this process. You need to change the balance. And then the export will be allowed. Are you ready to do that, taking into account the fact that the import was significant, huge import, 50%. I believe that's more difficult now, but in the future we will get to the market where there will be import and export now. I understand. This is impossible now, because uh, according to the balance, there could be no export. The producers are selling gas in Ukrainian market with 20% discount, but that was happening because of different reasons. First, the production uh, was stopped. Uh, the production of some companies was, the operations of some companies was stopped. Uh, now this is the summer period of time and the consumption went down. Now there is a 20% or de decrease in gas consumption. Plus we do not control large uh, gas uh, uh, consumers in the East. Uh, the problems got accumulated. In the future, yeah, we'll, we'll have that. And when the, when the law and gas market starts um, operating, then um, this issue will be resolved. Allow me to provide a brief comment. In accordance with the requirements of energy community and European directives, this should be, and this in the legislation, there should be a free outflow or, or a free movement of gas in different directions. But the same legislation, and it was discussed with the Secretariat of Energy Community, uh, there was a provision registered that the government on their part are responsible for the security of supply for they're responsible for energy security in the country, whether each consumer can get a required volume of gas. As, uh, as soon as there is a threat that, first of all, the population may not receive the uh, certain amount of gas, then the government has the right 
to apply certain actions in the market uh, to protect the population for the security. And now when the law becomes effective with the um, energy community, we need to find the balance so that on the one hand we are all sure that we will not stay in winter with 5 BCM of gas in uh, gas storage facility, but on the other hand, so that it's not like manual regulation, so that the companies have the possibility to export gas if needed. Unfortunately, we cannot hear without the mic. Licensing exists not just for gas. Now there's the uh, restriction for export of interest anthracite. Well, as soon as the law on gas market starts uh, operating, we will start moving in this direction. I agree. If we really want the market to be efficient, it should be competitive and it should be open. Because when we want to preserve or to guarantee the availability of gas in winter, there should be some other bylaws which would impose obligations on traders to uh, keep certain volume of gas or some other instrument should be in place. So I believe next, uh, this year, next year, we will regulate it. when consuming, when importing 20 BCM of gas, it is difficult to talk about export. All depends on market price. When we do have the market, it will be different. But now, while we don't have the market price, you understand, we need to first uh, and guarantee the strategic interests of the consumers. So let's move on. Uh, I have a remark to what Elena Pavlenka said. Elena mentioned that let's wait for October when the report is issued. My proposal is be more active get involved into this process, uh, like the Center of Reform Support is uh, reacting to all the letters with the request to find something in the Secretariat of the Cabinet of Ministers. Uh, so let, that is why, please um, help. Good afternoon. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, event. Um, I uh, would like to uh, describe the market as the instrument of attracting investments. This is quite a complicated issue. And because uh, uh, we have not seen the draft law on a new market of electricity. All the questions we have, we still have. I had to change my presentation because the law does have answers to some questions. I would like to emphasize how we should move from our existing situation to the model which is described in the law, to the European practice. Here, you see how the situation in thermal generation what is the situation in thermal generation? You see the paradox. All the power plants are already uh, obsolete. That means that um, they, they depleted their resource. When we are saying that we address uh, the task of not just modernization, but integration of the energy system of Ukraine into the 
energy market of Euro European Union, we say that we need to pay attention to new capacities, capacities which will be more efficient. What could it be? Uh, today, unfortunately, out of the strategies that exist, it's difficult to define. If we look at the world practice in Germany, in most European countries, this is gas generation. Uh, per gas uh, uh, units, which ensure high uh, electric and thermal cycle, and they are the cheapest from the point of view of the uh, cost, uh, of the cost of uh, uh, installing them. So will we support the equipment which is so much de depleted? The oldest uh, boiler is uh, of 1926. It's still operating, but how efficient it is. What we lack and what we need to do, and that is what Mikhail mentioned, we need to harmonize the whole regulatory basis. Well, the Ministry of Energy should become the leader in this process. Why? Because the slide shows the list of regulations which are to be amended to implement the procedure of permits. What is the main investment, uh, the, the, the main source of attracting investments from European markets? Our legislation is not ready for that. And if we say that we need to attract investments to electricity sector, then I would like to say that we need to look at that comprehensively as to the existing situation. I would like to draw your attention to what is not mentioned a lot, but that is how to ensure the balance between the state and private owner. It's difficult. There's a monopolist, a large company, which is the monopolist in the segment of heat generation. But should the state create some mechanism to guarantee investments for private companies or not? The draft law today does not provide answer to this question. So if we look at how this works in Europe, it works differently there. Talking about European experience, it is important for us to understand that, that the market of electricity will not be able to attract investments. Electricity market is the market of commodity. And this will not ensure construction of uh, a new thermal or nuclear power unit. If you look at the German uh, practices, Germans to have to uh, create additional funds to close their nuclear plants. In most countries, uh, they are looking at the markets of capacity, where the markets where they sell not electricity, but the possibility to generate or consume the electricity. With that, in fact, that is one of the main solutions used. Why? Because now in Europe, there are uh, different changes of energy mix. If you look at the share of renewables uh, that reached a certain percentage. Now the peak consumption in European countries was uh, equal to basic at the expense of the share of renewables. That is very important signal for us. Now Europe thinks of how shall we support this uh, green energy from the point of view of balance, of ensuring when you um, flexibility of these mechanisms. And uh, in some countries, they do have this special mechanism. In some countries, they are planning to have it. Every country has its own experience. And it's important to understand that every country addresses their tasks with these uh, at these markets. And they address the ministry. Let, uh, for us to have more efficient market, we need to understand why do we need it. 
because we understand that in this segment of large generation we have monopolies and we will probably not be able to ruin them. Talking about electricity supply, we also have monopoly, but the new market, European and uh, Ukrainian realities, they are different. What will be uh, our targets uh, that we want to achieve? Are we for stimulating export or replacing uh, the infrastructure? If we define the objectives, then we will be able to implement the law clearer. From the point of view of the most difficult stage, uh, which is implementation of the law, that's movement from an operating market to a new one. Unfortunately, the existing market lost all its positive uh, uh, factors. That is now the state regulation, the, the, the system regulated by the state. And now uh, all are more or less happy with the system, both the generation and the Obel Energis. They've been living with that for 10 years. And to refuse from this system to move to a new system is possible only when every one of the participants of the market uh, regulator will understand its new role and why they are doing it. For that, I suggest that colleagues should pay attention to such a thing. And this is maybe to make a it is easier for the ministry to work. Uh, I suggest let's talk uh, in figures so that we can show to Verkhovna Rada, to the chairman of the committee, to all the stakeholders what will the reform give. Uh, let us uh, uh, create the system of technical economic modeling. I started developing it together with one of the institutions, and if the ministry supports me, then I believe this could be a good uh, solution to implement the law so that we can show what will happen to tariffs, why tariffs can grow. If the system is approved at the level of the Cabinet of Ministers, this will be a good help for the Cabinet of Ministers from the point of view of implementation of the reforms. And another thing, I address the colleagues. In fact, many issues uh, which we ask, they're not new. And uh, in the ministry, these questions were asked and the answers were provided. Uh, and uh, uh, thank, uh, it was good. The answers were quite good. And uh, our consultants, as well as international, were putting a lot of efforts into providing answers to them, especially to the question on investments. I just suggest, if possible, let's uh, mm, uh, again, uh, talk about that. Uh, I have a big uh, survey of the World Bank. Uh, uh, I'm ready to share it with Mikhail. All the amendments to laws, to bylaws, they're ready. And uh, they are uh, just to be finalized. I believe that jointly we'll be able to implement reform and it will produce a very positive result. Questions? Any questions? First, I would like to uh, greet Andre with a good report. Um, now, well, mm, we, we do have the discussion. Uh, you did a good, you, you very well emphasized pricing because pricing is a key factor to attract uh, investment. The investor who comes to the market should understand what will happen to tariffs today, tomorrow. On the other hand, Ukraine, talking about the electricity market is quite unique because part of the market is already working. There's some piece of a market, and as far as I know, 
uh, we also thinking about changing tariffs. Should we do it? Should we be changing tariffs for the market? for some piece of the market which operates with the European partner. What do you mean by tariff? The tariff for electricity generation. Here's the mechanism. They are working based on price uh, you are probably not talking about tariff, but about the tariff that the plant receives. Um, it uh, uh, works competing with our plants. And the system worked uh, differently in, Bur in, in the uh, island because there was only Zahid and Erga, three plants that were operating there. One was Burstinska, Kalushska which have uh, unique preferences. Uh, they can work in parallel with European Union, that's true. And they have the line to the east. Uh, the wholesale, the Council of Wholesale Market voted for change of rules. That is, I believe, uh, is a correct uh, solution because this will make the work of all the plants uh, on the territory of Ukraine equal and fair. I understand that this will not influence export of electricity. The export was growing and um, uh, the Zahid Energa was working uh, almost at uh, full capacity. Burstinsky plant is operating eight or nine units. Will the participants have enough resources? Maybe that's not the topic uh, for this discussion, but I repeat it again and again. That the real cost of the kilowatt is about 70 kopek. The tariff that they get this month will be about 90 kopek. So you can calculate. They will have enough money even to maintain, to service their unit. We cannot understand uh, it, uh, the pla the, the, the uh, condition is what it is. That's what we are talking about. And in fact, they don't have any coal um, uh, in the warehouse. That's how the money could be spent. What else are the, how, how else are they spending money? We don't know. We believe we have done a lot. Talking about that market of electricity, a lot has been done. W talking about c collections. Energy market in May, first time from the beginning of this year, collected 100% money from consumers. That's a really big achievement because this way they can transfer this money for generation and Nergatam could buy the assemblies for this money and um, they can purchase coal. I believe that is a big um, achievement. And there are some other questions. The tariff has been set. It was uh, uh, signed by myself, by Nkairye. Uh, people understand what are the pluses and minuses, but the main thing that has been done, the level of collections was increased. In the beginning of the year, uh, one and a half billion were not paid to the market. This is the money which could not, the money which could have been sent for repairs and everything. Now we do collect this one and a half billion. That wasn't easy. For that, um, for that, some of Obel Energis had to be transferred to so-called zero algorithm. We had to conduct very complicated negotiations with Ru Russian side. 
There are many questions uh, uh, related to the lack of information received from the ministry on how the work is going on, especially talking about figures, so that the experts, the specialists could correctly model the situation. And another question. The, uh, what information should be given? What uh, figures do you uh, lack? So my proposal is please formulate uh, uh, what you need and start uh, exchanging the information so that we don't have questions about how the tariffs are formed. And um, also, In fact, uh, this is no problem. And uh, NERC uh, uh, has public meetings, and everyone who's interested in why such decisions were made, how the structure is being formed. Uh, at public meetings, you can ask these questions and get answers. Those who are interested, uh, uh, well, uh, all the graphs are published. Uh, and uh, I see no problem with that. In the ministry, there's a lot of information. And all the, uh, like Transgas, Ukrainerga, Nergerinak, they have plenty of information. Uh, maybe you will have doubts on the quality of the information, but uh, uh, this is enough for the general level. The last question to a specific speaker. And the question to you, in alternative uh, version of the draft law, there is a norm. 15% of sales should be fixed for direct uh, agreements. And to the minister, how do you calculate the cost that you have 17 generation has one grivna? It's very easy. First of all, they calculate coal at 1,500 grivna and they calculate at 1,100 grivna. And also, they um, inflate that. NERC is using similar principles for everyone, for Energa, Atom, Atom and others. For heat generation, why should they be different? That's a good question. Theoretically, NERC does not define the tariff for uh, heat generation, but understanding in reality how the tariff is being formed, we understand that it depends uh, on wholesale price set by NERC, and somehow it formulates this tariff. They make their calculations, they're very deep, uh, and in fact, Grivna tariff um, uh, includes many exotic uh, lines of expenditures that they could not explain. For example, expenditures for administering the central office, billions of grivnas, or uh, they are leasing the assets from themselves uh, and they pay for that uh, hundreds of millions. That is how they uh, form the cost, uh, plus 300 grivnas per ton of coal to service the debt, which we do not understand what was it spent for. Very brief um, reply. And tomorrow at 11.30, we'll be discussing the draft law. We were reading different uh, drafts. 
what we are talking about is just the market a day ahead. It's 15 percent. Uh, this is very disputable norm and guess it doesn't, it's not there. But the colleagues from NAC say that the, the market will uh, form uh, the price itself. Sergei, the floor is yours. My topic is on thermal energy consumption, uh, not so much import, but consumption. But I would like to start from a proposal. How uh, the Ministry of uh, uh, Energy could uh, uh, lead the in reforms? There is a team of. Uh, of uh, those who are implementing reforms. Um, you just need to invite, besides the workers from the ministry, the workers from Naftagaz, from, from NERC expert, experts, and my participation in such expert council on reform of public administration shows that we are now pushing forward our draft law on uh, civil service. It's at the committee now, and we hope that during this session it will be voted for. We have a big team that's working on it. Um, uh, we need to use this opportunity, and we are ready to attract uh, experts and civil society. Uh, civil service is my hobby, and the energy sector is my work. I will start from the example as to investment attractiveness uh, into thermal energy. Last year, our company signed uh, the uh, cooperation agreement with the Czech company that has an experience of investing uh, into 115 successful projects in Eastern Europe. The volume of uh, possible investments for five years was 7, 8 billion euros. But there was restriction immediate. You did not say that we consider investments into Ukraine besides what Putin called Novorossiya, uh, Kharkiv, Odessa, uh, Kherson. We went to southern Ukraine. Uh, we, there's a big uh, interest from communal enterprises. Uh, Is it Dragobich or Bereslav uh, water canal? They lost uh, 60 percent. Um, but whether these are losses or stolen, uh, I don't know. But we have selected the first uh, object for investment. Uh, and there were investments, uh, there were negotiations going on on Donbass, Minsk too. When there was a statement made that the agreements will not be executed, uh, the investors said not a single of our insurance companies agrees to insure our investments. We just delay our work till autumn. That's how the environment influences at attracting investments to Ukraine. Nevertheless, the investments are coming. There will be investments. As to the sector of housing uh, uh, and uh, thermal energy, the budget and the housing sector consumes about 30 40 percent of all the energy in Ukraine. Here's the graph households uh, plus budget 40 percent. The total thermal uh, power generation is 230-240 gigacalories a year. And the household uh, sector consumes um, uh, this much. Uh, 
this or that way about 20 billion cubic meters of gas are used to generate thermal energy. If we replace half of that gas by other alternative uh, fuels, that would require about 15, 20, 25 billion dollars investments, another 15, 20 billion are needed to introduce energy saving measures, which will reduce the total consumption of uh, electricity in Ukraine, of energy in Ukraine by 15%. What are the problems that we are facing? We now are actively investing into the sphere of heat supply, understanding that there are about 20,000 schools in Ukraine and all of them uh, require implementation of uh, alternative uh, sources of supply. We see that there are some problems with heating, with, with making the facades uh, uh, warmer. Another problem is over-regulation of the market. We now reach uh, the moment when we will have the technical uh, uh, the f some technical uh, details uh, we are now communicating with uh, Obel Energas if we do it quickly till the heating season we'll be able to install Uh, alternative uh, resource which is called night uh, electricity. The nuclear power plants work at night and that electricity is not used at night. If you use electric boilers with accumulation, the heating will be accumulated and then it will be used to heat the buildings in daytime. That is why we need this night tariff and introducing this 25% of day tariff made um, the gigacalories uh, very cheap. Investors uh, from abroad come to Ukraine. 15 years payback period is normal for them. They are ready to invest into water supply, into waste management with payback period of 15 years. But unfortunately, the situation we have in Ukraine, and I believe that Putin understands it, and he aggravates the situation so that investors, well, you know, investors, they insure the investments, and not a single insurance company will insure if there's a threat of force majeure. The second reason uh, why we have no investments there are no uh, means of stimulating energy efficiency with the exception of uh, increased tariffs. Increased tariffs made the profitable investment into this sector. A lot was promised, compensation for gas replacement. Now, I will show it on a slide. There was a resolution of the Cabinet of Ministers. If 20% are uh, done, then it would be good. Uh, I mentioned here the laws, the bylaws, the resolutions, and so on. The situation is still the same, just like it was in the past. What can we do? Uh, what should be done to improve the investment climate in Ukraine? Implementation of what the, the roadmap that was announced uh, should be implemented. The laws, the draft laws, the bylaws, the resolutions of the government are to be implemented. When private investor 
internal or foreign, domestic or foreign, has access to credits, and that will happen when the rate is less than 10% annual, then the special fund should be set up and to finance such investment projects. Our experience of getting a loan from EBRR, EBRD is uh, not less than $5 million, and the terms uh, are such that not every Ukrainian company will be able to get a loan. Also, the simplified procedure for land allocation. We know how to circumvent that. Uh, we know how uh, to avoid the procedure which takes half a year. If we launch this procedure, then we fail to complete it within this season. We found the opportunity. You understand that our investor, our entrepreneur, is always looking for such possibilities. And eventually, it's on the uh, our production. These are electric boilers uh, with night tariff, uh, according to the rating of doing business. Uh, last year, we had uh, 1,000 uh, and something. And so we understand what are the procedures. Um, they mention different investments. Um, thank you. Let us uh, ask questions after Natalia speaks. Um, Uh, we have little time left, um, and we are overburdened with the information. I will try to very quickly present my presentation so that we have more time uh, for discussion. My presentation is uh, attracting investments into modernization of gas sector. Gas and gas sector today are the newsmakers in political sense and uh, in other senses, especially when we are talking about energy and security, we understand our gas uh, uh, independence. Uh, the state uh, uh, puts an ambitious game till 2014 uh, to increase the gas uh, production. That would mean doubling gas production uh, compared to what we have now. Uh, we um, uh, ask the question how realistic it is. Uh, there are some factors which uh, uh, slow down the process. Let's be realistic and understand that Ukraine, with its own technical economic potential, will not be able, without attracting investments, double gas production. And we are interested uh, in attracting investments, but there are some factors which slow down uh, the uh, process. There are risks related to military actions in the east of Ukraine. Secondly, there is a very fierce political competition that exists. Thirdly, there are some economic problems that the state faces, but there are problems which are absolutely mm, related to gas production sector. Most of the wells have been in operation for 40, 50 years. They are absolutely exhausted, and they are to be liquidated and abandoned. Also, our seismic geology uh, exploration have uh, been decreased, and there's no uh, 
deep drilling going on. I was looking for an information how many companies drill uh, deeper than 5,000 meters. I found only two companies, maybe there are some other companies which uh, do such type of drilling. And uh, that means that there's a lack of experience to uh, recommission the wells which were abandoned in Soviet times. Now we look at them, we understand that they are to be relaunched. They give some low uh, flow rate, but uh, altogether they will provide what we need for our full subject gas balance. What do we offer? We offer a certain set. If we unite all the problems, if we combine all this, if we put them into focus groups, then we should concentrate our attention on the following. First of all, we need to activate exploration drilling. For that, we need to attract investments, especially because for such phenomenon, Ukraine has quite favorable conditions. The success of drilling is 40%. In Europe, it's 20-25%. We need to reconstruct the wells. Ukraine has a certain reserve from times of Soviet Union, which is about 8,000 wells. Re rehabilitation of these wells will allow us within five years to start uh, producing 3-5 BCM of gas. And it is important because the US, Canada, Russia are doing it. There are certain methods and methodologies how to successfully implement these practices. The next aspect is renewal of our technical uh, hardware. Ukrgazvodobovanya mentioned that their fleet, drilling fleet, was uh, uh, renewed about 16 years ago. Doing that without, is impossible, it is impossible to do that without foreign investors. It is also to, for the state to create favorable conditions for investment. The minister mentioned that he has data that during two or three years we'll be able to increase gas production by 5-8 BCM of gas. As I see the situation, in 5-7 years we can increase uh, up to 10 BCM of gas. That is optimistic scenario, but on condition that investments will come here and the market of gas will be the market of European, uh, European uh, type market, which will be open and transparent for investors. One more aspect, uh, underground uh, storage facilities. Ukraine is absolutely unique state, the third state in the world after the U.S. that have 120 billion Russia and Ukraine uh, has 31 billion. Uh, probably cubic meters of gas in the, uh, which are the capacities of storage facilities. 25 billion of cubic meters of gas are in Western Ukraine. Europe has 78 billion cubic meters of gas, but not a single European country uh, has uh, such um, big uh, facilities. I would like to say that gas storage facilities were organized in Ukraine in the 70s, and we understand that, again, technical equipment there is both physically and morally obsolete. And without attracting foreign investments, it is impossible to do that. 
potential partners for investment into automation accounting, storage. So Emerson Electric, Rockwell Siemens, Madsen Schneider, General Electric, and other companies could be interesting for us. European states that have requirement in gas, but those who have no reservoirs, they come to get uh, to, to, to rent uh, them from other countries. Uh, Czech Republic uh, leasing it from Slovakia. And for Slovakia, this is an additional argument for additional money for the budget. Uh, uh, I uh, show you this slide so that you understand that for the period of heating season, our storage facilities are half filled. We have 10, 12 BCM, which uh, are free, and we can uh, invite Europeans here and we can earn money on that. Usually in the heating season, the average cost of a thousand cubic meters is about $25 or euros. That in total, it could give about 1 billion additional money to uh, Ukraine's budget. Thank you for attention. We have three minutes left. The president of the Academy of Energy of Ukraine. I looked at your table, and I understand that I am back in 2000, where the gas production, we import 50%, 36 or 34% is own production, and 14 we had for transit. I don't see that now, 14%. That is 30%. Where is it? We now receive not for transit, not gas, but money. So what is the analysis, which even myself cannot understand? I am an expert. What do we say about people who are here? I'm sorry, when you are preparing the material, be very correct. Now the direct question, how much do we not receive in gas. I believe this would be about 20%. Don't scare with figures. Our people, well, and one more thing to you. On the 15th, we'll be considering the issue of increasing the capacity of our thermal units. We will go to Hromadske Radio. We have a technology. We will be changing the capacity by 15, 30 percent. It could change the capacity. And it will cost 20 times the cheaper than the replacement of filters. Such technology was tested in the US and Poland, anywhere. I was listening about old boiler. Do you know what is the old boiler? in South California. It was made in 1958. We had the boiler of 1946. Not a single pipe had to be replaced. Let's not talk about when the boiler was uh, produced, but uh, let's talk about the quality. Because I see when the bo new boilers were installed, in two years, uh, they cannot be used. Many questions. The minister knows. We'll meet tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Many questions. Many issues which uh, 
seem to be easily resolved are not resolved, and others which seem to be complicated are easy to resolve. You believe you, that your technical solution will provide solution. This is not mine. We'll be considering it. If it resolves, may I answer your first question? Thank you for your question, but I would like you to pay attention to how the table was named. Uh, forecast gas balance of Ukraine according to the uh, strategy 2030. That is what is in the energy strategy. I just com provided comments on the last figure. The microphone is not used, sorry. This balance was created earlier. Знаете, это как любой прогноз. Для того, чтобы понимать, хоть в каком направлении мы двигаемся, и что для этого самое... That is why today publicly I mentioned that the cost of the night energy for a long period of time will be uh, recalculated in gigacalorie, it will be cheaper. In, uh, electric Those who are thinking about putting gas boiler or electric boiler, it will be better to put the electric boiler. Volodymyr and Mikhailo, all this discussion is concentrated around upstream. The Ministry of Energy could be renamed into Ministry of Upstream. And so, what are your further steps? Ukrainian government is in investing 25 billion grivnas into subsidizing the consumer and only 300 million into subsidizing energy efficiency. What would be the next roadmap? So that on the demand side, uh, on the side of a consumer, because Ukraine is the leader in energy non-efficiency, we are still combining the uh, uh, economic growth with uh, energy consumption growth. What is the next step? When will you start investing into energy efficiency of a consumer? Very simple answer. Now, with all limited resources, we are doing what is needed. That's like anesthesia. To increase the tariffs for gas for consumers, that subsidy was introduced. And these funds are going to be spent to balance this issue for energy efficiency 
and uh, for energy substitution and changing of the structure, we need additional uh, steps, absolutely different steps. And at present, we do not have funds uh, to finance them. So we cannot compare them 300 million and 24 billion. Well, it's not worthwhile because these are funds uh, which are not targeted for resolving the problems. It's an athesia, and the surgery is only starting now. And that's the issue. Before we do something, we have to balance the situation. And at present, it's exactly we are talking about it. We have the law on energy servicing companies. Um, at the very beginning, I told if we are going to direct our efforts on the big players, the state, international institutions, we are going to uh, do very limited number of things. Like, for example, the funds into Teplo Comun Energa, it's like uh, 10, uh, 10, 10 of them have obtained 300 million. 10 Vodo Canals have obtained 380 million. And this is uh, the uh, loans of the EBRD and World Bank. They are working already. But the main money has to come from private investors because the major losses are at the phase of the consumption. Look, uh, the old buildings which are made of panels, uh, the Khrushchevkas, uh, until they are not modernized, updated, uh, yeah, until they are being uh, um, sealed uh, and uh, the windows and the roofs and uh, the attics. Well, it will be difficult to talk about the effect. And these requires hundreds of billions of grimna in the best case. Uh, and uh, we are requested to round up. Uh, just one comment by Olena. And uh, then we will thank you very much for your attention. It was a very good question in the context of the name of our event. Uh, the matter is that the investor is not going to come to the sector which is being subsidized. Investors are not going to come to modernize uh, uh, the economy and to work with our end users if they are using the minimum. Uh, well, they, they are paying less than the market price uh, of uh, gas or electricity. We know that in Europe, the end users, the households, uh, pay more than the industries. But now uh, we cannot implement uh, this option. This is where we have to move to. And this is our target, but it will take a long time. Uh, uh, first of all, the first steps in the direction uh, which was uh, mentioned uh, has been made. This is the law on electricity market. There is a clause on protection of the consumer rights. There are forecasting uh, clauses. And if this uh, law works, uh, it will be a good step in terms of improving the demand side. Demand management, uh, increase of traff tariffs, and the philosophy of increasing the tariffs. Uh, and. Uh, um, and actually bringing them up to the market prices. Uh, this will bring the investment into upstream, and it will stimulate the uh, production of the energy resources, uh, gas in particular. But it also will give incentives to the consumers, uh, households, uh, to invest their own money into the more energy efficient technologies. And this is also an impact on the demand as well. So all these things are interrelated. And I'd like to thank all the participants, Mr. Minister, who has spent two hours with us, the experts uh, who have uh, prepared their presentations at a short notice. And I hope that this is not the last joint meetings of ours. And organizers would like to say a few words. Uh, sorry. Uh, as the representative of uh, this uh, site, Mr. Demchishin said that uh, I am tired of explaining, but you will have to explain many times to help uh, this cause. I would like to inform you that the Ministry of uh, uh, the Foreign Affairs of Sweden is going to help us. They are going to support the project and communication of the reforms in the energy sector. And uh, within the framework of this project, here in the Media Center, the Center for Reforms, uh, we are going to 